So I'm going to refer you to uh, other videos for these, and uh, especially just jump to the prosecutor's fallacy. The prosecutor's fallacy, uh, in a nutshell, is equating the probability of a match with the probability of innocence given a match. So the odds of a match are 1 out of 20,000. This is what the expert witness testifies about the DNA found. The prosecutor then turns to the jury and says essentially this, the odds of anyone else having this match are 1 in 20,000. This is not true. And then he takes that odds of innocence and turns it into the odds of guilt. This number right here is 1 minus 1 over 20,000. So this is not correct. And one way to see this is to go back to this frequency. If 1 out of 20,000 individuals has this uh, genetic material, then in a place like Portland, there will be 3 or more. It's 3.3. But 3 to 4 people who match. If you have no other evidence on this individual except for the DNA, in this case, the odds that you picked up the correct person is 1 in 3, or 1 in 4. Not a lot of room here. So 1 in 3, or 1 in 4. Well, that doesn't sound very reliable. It sounds like you're more likely to be wrong than not. If you're 33% or 25% certain that you've picked up the correct person with the match. So the prosecutor's fallacy is dangerous because it takes a number that sounds extraordinarily rare and it equates it with innocence. And so now it sounds like the, the, the probability of innocence is 1 in 20,000. But that's not the case. The probability of innocence in this rather simple example would be 75% um, you know, or 67%. These being the probability of, um, of, uh, of guilt. So one more time. The probability of a match being confused with the probability of innocence given that match. This is the prosecutor's fallacy. This is wrong.